Hello, good evening. It's Tessa Marie, and welcome to the Tessa Marie Show. Tonight is spiritual night. So, as you know, this is a new month. Today is July 1st, and I decided to change things up here at the Tessa Marie Show. So, from Monday to Friday, I would be bringing the pillars of prosperity. The pillars of prosperity are the five things, the five things you need to live a fulfilled life. So what I have decided to do is to introduce you to the pillars of prosperity one at a time and then we'll follow through and put them together to help you to live a fulfilled life. A life where you can own your own home, drive the car of your choice, be debt free and go on an annual or two vacations every year. So this is what is at the testimony show. This is what is happening right now. We have changed things around a bit, move it up, and specialize in what we do best, what we know best. This is my niche. This is my dot. This is the thing that I love to take part in. This is what I love to help with. And as you know, the five pillars of prosperity are mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, and financial. One is not any stronger than the other. One is not more important than the other. So for this reason, you need all five to be well-tuned, well-oiled, and working like a well-run machine. When that happens, that is when you get the real thing moving through you. And that is when you can push your hand up and pick a life that is wonderful and fulfilled. A life where you will be able to do all the things. A life where you will fill your cup and also be able to fill the cup of others. So welcome to the Testimony Show. And let us begin. Tonight is spiritual night. So, what is spirituality? What does it mean to you? To people, it means several different things. It means a God. It means a special being. It means someone that is absolutely amazing to them. It means the God inside of them. It means the creator, the universe, the omnipotent. What is spiritual to you? Spiritual to me is living a life when you give someone else a chance to do the same. is practicing the golden rule, is treating others as you want to be treated, treating others to do the things that you would like to do, giving everyone a chance to live that wonderful and amazing life. So what we have to remember is that when you're a spiritual being, you have to be conscious of your actions, your thoughts, and certainly, most certainly your words. The thoughts are yours. The words, once they have, they have left your lips, cannot be threaded back through the needle. It is not going to go back. So you are left with it all there, and then you have to deal with it. So what I will do with the spiritual on Thursday is strictly spiritual. You have questions you want to ask. We will delve into the different things that you will notice. Spiritual life is not just going to a temple, to a church, to a synagogue, to a a shrine it has nothing to do with that that helps but it's not the most important thing your spiritual life begins in your heart that has to be open that has to be not non-judgmental that has to be respectful of others that has to be letting others live the life guidance but not to force them into doing something that they're not supposed to do you have to become the change you want to see you have to help others to be that amazing and wonderful human being. You know they can be. So this is what happens when you live a fulfilled spiritual life. A life that is balanced and a life that gives others a chance to do the same. Not forcing your standards or your opinions on them. Not being so critical, being uplifting, encouraging, supporting and saying you are the best. I can see it in you. You have it in you. You are worthy. You, you, don't, you do not use words that are going to demote their feelings and make them feel worse than they're feeling. Your words have to uplift others. Our responsibility is to enhance others, inspire them, push them up a little higher. Let them see that you are there for them. Let them feel your support coming through to them. This is what a fulfilled life is. This is what a spiritual life is, supporting others as they go through life, supporting them when sometimes they don't know where the help is coming from, 
supporting them when you see that they, they, they don't know that they need help right away. Not to be intrusive, not to force yourself on another human being, being kind and generous with what you know, your teachings, your love, your understanding. So a spiritual life is a life where you are tuning to the moment. Living life in the moment is what enables you to have that spiritual life. That is what it is. Living life in that wonderful moment enables you to stay tuned and you realize where you are. Each step you make, each breath you take has to be purposefully aligned to that life you want. The life you want for yourself is the life you have to give to others. You cannot choose to have the best life for yourself, but there you are with thoughts that are not encouraging, thoughts that you're thinking ill of your friends, your neighbor, your siblings, whoever they are. Because what we think is what we receive. So if you, we sit there and we're taking in these thoughts, these thoughts from others, and we're saying this thought is going to this person, that's how I feel about them. It, it has a boomerang effect. Some people say it's cyclical. It will come right back to you. I prefer to think it's boomeranging because you don't know what spiritual practice that person has done today to protect themselves from negative energy. They have built themselves, they have greeted themselves, they have said faith to themselves, they love themselves, they have given themselves something to hold on to. And this is what the spiritual, spiritual person would do. They would understand that and they would say, you know what, I'm going to let them be themselves. I can guide, I can say something nice to them, but I'm going to let them be who they truly, truly want to be. So this is what a spiritual being does. And to live that balanced life is to feel light. A spiritual being does not feel heavy. If you find yourself feeling sluggish and heavy and a little bit confused, almost like you're in a daze, that is the moment you need to retreat. You pull back, you look at your actions and wonder, what am I thinking? What thoughts are generating from my heart? What thoughts am I sending out to the world? Why am I feeling that way? You don't look at how, you look at what am I doing and why am I doing it? Who is it going to help that behavior, that negative behavior? Who is it enhancing? Is it enhancing you? No. Is it going to enhance the person? No. It is just going to keep you down. And that's what you need to do. Touch your heart. Go in there and wave and look at it and say, you know what? Wake up. We need to send love out to the world. We need to send joy out to the world. Happiness to the world. Thankfulness to the world. Gratitude to the world and appreciation. A spiritual being, when you practice your spiritual being, you almost come to the point where you're constantly in a joyful state because you see things much lighter, with full of love, full of understanding, lots of respect and kindness for all. Because being spiritual, as I said, does not mean you go to church, you join your hands, you kneel down and you pray. So that is not being spiritual. That's being a little bit just saying, I am following the rules. Because for the minute you leave, there you are criticizing somebody else. That does not bring your spiritual being right to you. That moves it away. It, 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 it shakes it up. When you're spiritual, you have to open your heart. If a friend, you see a friend is hurting, offer a prayer. It does not have to be a long prayer. Make it. Stop what you're doing and give it. Send it out immediately. And, and let them have it. Just say, all I want you to do is to know that I am here for you. That is what a spiritual being does. So the spiritual pillar of spiritual um, prosperity keeps you on top of things. It makes you feel really, really great at what you're doing. It helps you more than it helps those around you. It's funny. The same way the negative emotions and the negative thoughts, words, and actions destroy you, so does the great spiritual attitude towards each other human you meet makes you feel better. You grow. You suddenly realize, wow, all these things are happening for me. Beautiful, amazing things are happening to my life. I have opportunities to do better. I feel better. My health is doing well. My family is, is, is happier. A joy comes over you that nothing 
it is indescribable, truly indescribable. It, <laughs> you smile when you don't know why you're smiling. You, you listen with a, a, a feeling that is so, em so full of empathy and love that the person you're talking to, whether they're on the, like where you are and where I am, you, you're supposed to make sure I connect with you. That's what it is. I want you to know that we are all humans at the same time and we have to love and care for others. Those negative feelings weigh, weigh down on a spiritual being. Living life, just living life, is the biggest spiritual adventure of all. That is why you have to surrender to the moment. That is why you have to give life a chance to unfold for you. That is why you do not step in front of the, what's happening. You flow with it. That is why you don't run ahead of it. That is why you have to stay in the moment. That's why you don't look back. That's why you realize that the past is your history and your history is a teacher. It's not something to drag into the present moment. And the future is a mystery. We have no idea what falls in another second. But right this moment, that's a gift. And this is why it's called the present moment. That's why it's important to push on it and lean on it and love on it and see what you're, we are all doing. We need to look at our moments one by one, each moment as it unfolds through the day. And this moment we have now, this really good moment, is the most important moment because that moment is the moment that creates wonderful moment. When I always teach my, my friends and the people I mentor, I always say to them, each moment is just that little second in time. Make it count. Make that moment count. Do not sit back and look at that moment in 10 minutes and say, oops, I shouldn't have said that. That is something we do. But you know the one we don't do, which we should do, is whoops, I shouldn't have thought that about my friend, my neighbor, my children, my brother, my sister. Oh, I shouldn't have thought that. We forget to do this one. And that's the one we do more often. That's the easy thought that we do more often. We see sometimes a complete stranger and we do not even know why. Why is that person where they are right now? But we stand and we make a, 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 a judgment on them. We don't know. I had a friend watching a show with me, not together, but we were both watching this live. And there was this man talking and when it was over, it was so good. I called that friend and I said, did you, wasn't that great? Do you know what the answer I got? I was appalled. I was shocked and I went, wow. Do you know what the person said to me? They said to me, he was so fat and he was sitting in the dark wearing black clothes. And I said, what? I said, that's what you got for 45 minutes to an hour? I said, is that what you went on there to do? And, and of course, I said, no, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole with you because there is not an exit at the other side and the, and the rocks will fall on me if I follow you into that hole. So I, I don't want to talk to you about this. Oh, well, if somebody's going on, on these things, they should be dressed and they should be, what they said, they shouldn't be so fat, not dressy, they fat. And I go, no. That doesn't matter. I went there for the substance of this person. I went there for the message from that person. I went there to pick up one little thing. I don't know what it was. I don't know, and that's what I said. I did not go there to see whether he was fat, he was small, he was black, he was pink, he was yellow. I went there to get the information he was spitting out by the parallels. Didn't you catch anything? And no, he still couldn't bring himself to say, yes, I did. You know what his answer was? The other guy had more to, had, well, had better information. Why? The other guy was slim. The other guy was in the light. But can you imagine this person that is sitting there in the dark and in black clothes and knowing that he's big and why you think he's hiding? Because you know, the critics are waiting. He knows the dogs want to bite his tail off. He knows they want to, they, they will not listen to him. They'll not hear him. 
they will just see what he looks like and judge him. But the thing is, they are losing out. He's not losing out. He was gifted with a talent. He was blessed with these gifts and this talent. And he took a stand and wanted to share to the world. And this one person thought like that. I'm so glad that person couldn't have stood there and faced him and said something like that. Because we forget. As scripture tells us, before you take this tie in my eye, make sure you remove the beam that is in yours. That just tells you the tiny little star on the tip of my lower lid is nothing compared to the big beam that is covering your eye. That's why you cannot see the deepness of it. That's what scripture taught us. So that's why the pillar of spirituality, if you don't have it working, your life won't work. If you don't have a spiritual connection to self and to heart and to thoughts, your, your life won't work. Our life won't work. None of us will work if our spirituality is weak, if it, our spirituality is, is shattered, is, is, is destroyed, it won't work. So that's one of the reasons why we must always make sure, our, our, as I said, it doesn't have to be church. It has to be living life every day, surrender into the moment with love, compassion, generosity, kindness, and just send it out there. He, it would have been much better had he said to me, oh, I, I, I hope that if he, something is wrong with him, he's getting help for that. If you want to see, I didn't see that. To be honest with you, I was, I was so mesmerized by his words. I just sat, sat there listening. And that's what we all must do. These are the things we have to do for each other to balance ourselves. Because our spiritual connection and the five pillars of prosperity, if one pillar is broken, the other folk will suffer. If we go around damaging the spiritual being that we are by being nasty and unkind and judgmental and critical and harsh to others, we are, make, we are blocking our own wealth, our own good. Not only wealth, prosperity wealth, we are, block, we are blocking emotional, mental, physical, and financial um, things coming to us. We are blocking them. So for that reason, we must make the time and go at it and work for it and make sure that our spiritual being is balanced because we need them all. Five of them, they're like the fingers of one hand. When our baby fingers cut, the other four suffers. So if spiritual life is wrecked, the other four will hurt. Because you will be like a, a ship on, like on a lake with no, with no direction, with no rudder. That's what happens to us. Our spiritual connection is important. It is important to connect with self. It starts in the heart, it goes to the brain, and it comes out in our words and our action. And we, make, we have to be sure that our words and our actions are perfect, as perfect as we can, to make somebody else feel good. To make them feel that they are okay, they're right, they're perfect, because we are all created in that perfect vision of God. So that's why spiritual connection is so, so important. We need to hold on to it for dear life and work it. Feel compassion. Compassion is, is, is a gift. If you can look at somebody and you can see they're hurting or they say something and you can feel the hurt, show your compassion. What can I do for you? What can I do to help you? What can I do to lift that yoke off your shoulder? And it's a simple action. Maybe just say, you can talk to me. I'll listen. I'll be there for you. I can breathe a prayer for you. I can ask for compassion and love and, and peace and tranquility for you. Because that's what a spiritual being do. A spiritual being has to listen, respect what you heard, and do not criticize it. Do not make each other feel worse than we are. Do not press on our back and tell us we are this and we are that. That has destroyed lives. You all know about Whitney Houston. She sang like a bird. The voice was amazing, but somebody always told her she wasn't good enough. So after every performance, she wanted to know, was I good enough? And that alone was destroying. So let us all love ourselves 
Because if we don't love the, the, the creation in us, we cannot love the creation in others. So before we criticize others, send love. Open your heart. Stimulate those, those vows. Let them clear. And let them receive this wonderful gift of love. And send it out to the world. Make a habit of it. Make a habit. When we did the 31 days of gratitude, we were sending out love to the world. Somebody told me today, I miss that. She said, you know, it really helped me to see the world better. So send some love out to the world. Instead of saying something negative about somebody, say, you know what? I love you. Or you turn around and say, the Holy Spirit in me is greeting the Holy Spirit in you. We all have a God inside of us. Our God is not outside of us. Our God is within us. Our God has never left us because our God is part of us and we are part of God if we believe in creation. He's not a punishing God. He's not going to suffer, make you suffer any more than you could. We decide, we make choices. So let's lift each other up and be kind and loving and caring to others so we can be kind and loving to caring to ourselves because charity begins at home. It doesn't end there. So first we must love who we are. We must accept ourselves if all our faults, all our perfect imperfections, what makes us unique and what makes us strong. So I hope tonight, the 1st of July, the first of our five pillars of prosperity, tonight it was a spiritual pillar and the format has changed. And I have the faith and the confidence and my core belief that we'll be doing wonderful. And I'm leaving it all to you guys to so love yourself first and then love those that are close to you. And where those you cannot reach or touch, send love out to them. So send in your light and joy. Have a wonderful evening.